video covers a professional's point of view on abuse. We talk to Dr. Ashwini, who is the director of Mukta Foundation. Dr. Ashwini is on a journey where she aims to prevent violence and promote wellness. Dr. Ashwini speaks about what is mental health, what is abuse, the cultural approach to abuse, and gender differences. Talking about the mental health, so everybody has their own understanding of mental health. So I want to know what is your personal understanding when when you hear this word mental health. Sure. I mean, uh, I mean, it's such an interesting question. At least the way I see is, let's say there is mental illness, mental health. But I think we should not restrict to mental health. Instead, we need to move towards mental wellness. See, sometimes you see, uh, mental health is simply seen as the absence of mental illness. But that, I feel, is a very limited view. Because sometimes when we want to speak about mental health and mental wellness, we found people saying, but I'm not mentally ill. But then what I'm attempting to say here is mental health is certainly not the absence of mental illness. It's a state wherein you experience mental wellness. And now that's a lifelong journey. So this would be my difference. Your organization, they exclusively focus on abuse, starting from like child abuse to technological abuse. So what's the root cause of abuse? Like any kind of abuse, what's the root cause? So when we say we focus on abuse, what we essentially mean is we focus on the interrelationship between abuse and mental health. Yeah. So what we believe is more often than not behind mental illnesses there could be some form of interpersonal abuse and as you might already understand the consequence of interpersonal abuse could be mental illness. So when we say our focus is on prevention of abuse, we look at it related to mental health promotion itself. Do you find any cultural differences between people like when you do your workshop or any kind of session? So do you find any cultural differences from one state to another state? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe I'll share this. Not so much, uh, you know, the differences in terms of uh, the states. Every time I've worked in cities, you know, the kind of uh, the participants who have got for the training program, in-house training programs have been mental health professionals. Now, I mean, nothing against, you know, any particular group. So now, when you're training mental health professionals, these mental health professionals usually may want to conduct programs in a very formal setting. And they do, you know, transfer information. But something that we've seen when uh, we've conducted training sessions in rural areas is for them programs are not necessarily in a formal setting wherein there is one speaker and then they are training. It can happen with a neighbor, you know, it can happen when they went for market, you know, that sort of spirit wherein topics about prevention of abuse need not be restricted to a formal training setting, you know, it should become part of our daily conversation. That difference I have found. So inspiring to see how one group wants to make conversation on prevention of abuse part of their daily life. It's beautiful to see. Okay, so ma'am, you work with both males and females. So do you find any differences with the gender? Like how they respond to what you do? So in fact, it's quite uh, unfortunate that, you know, I mean, yes, we want to work with both male and uh, the female members, generally with everybody. But somehow, uh, the, the request for help or service has predominantly come from women. Like say, for example, uh, we had once collaborated with this other organization for conducting this program called Marmara. So Marmara is essentially sitting under a tree like Mara and then chatting on uh, the con uh, on issues that really matters. So when Vimoshna collaborated with us for one Marmara, we chose the topic of intimate partner violence as experienced by male members thinking that it's a topic that not many have spoken about and why not have a marmara, one session on that. It was so unfortunate that there were very few men who were willing to speak about it. Once again, the participants who came were from, you know, one particular, uh, the gender, you know, the group, out to. But then something that we mostly encourage is um, for men to also be part of the training programs, wanting to 
you know engage them as collaborators wherein they transfer information knowledge on a particular topic of prevention of abuse to others so we are trying to engage them to begin with in the role that they think best suits them and then maybe you know slowly but definitely i think we are making progress in engaging them thank you so much thank you so much for your time yeah thanks a lot thank you all the very best we hope you enjoyed this video Please hit the like button to let us know.